Well, good morning, good morning. How are you? Back again. And it's a gorgeous summer's day. Not only that, the uh, windy bends are now open. So I can go what I think of as the scenic route, as opposed to the route that saves me two or three minutes, but which is a bit of a Grand Prix so here, you know. That's looking nice, everything's grey, not bad. Anyway, what are we going to talk about today? Only, only the most significant thing, story, that's come along. In the history of Dead Street, since 1954, that's what. I look at a Dead Street magazine yesterday, and I look at the story on the front, but could not believe my eyes. And I still don't think most people understand the significance of this story, so I'm going to cover it. And that story, you may know it, it's the Williams versus the GDC case. And broadly speaking, there was a case of a young dentist, probably not the best young dentist in the world, but then who is, who was, I wasn't, um, who fell out with her principal and then ended up in front of the GDC with a bunch of allegations about poor performance, basically, probably all remedial in my opinion. And... Um, capable of remediation let's put it that way and uh and of course amplified by the general dental council who's you know make a mountain out of a molehill and and throw throw enough pasta at the wall don't they in the hope that some of it will stick uh, but the main uh charge on which she was struck off was dishonesty and the dishonesty was that she had suggested to a patient that they might like to chip in a bit towards uh the cost of a a better quality crown. So in other words, instead of having a NHS porcelain crown, um, that they might like to have a ceramic crown, which might look nice and be stronger and be less likely to break and last longer. So, so let's let's just because I mean we're going to have to kaching up the hypocrisies in this case, right? But that's the first one that, that the dentist was struck off for dishonesty. For being honest, for saying that there was uh, the, the option of having a better job than what's available on the health service. Now, just to set out the summary for, for anyone who really doesn't know anything about this case, what happened? She was struck off by the GDC for dishonesty and, and breaking the first rule as far as they're concerned, which is uh, saying that the NHS isn't the dog's bollocks in terms of quality. And then uh, it was appealed to the High Court, which is where you have to go to the GDC, you know, it finds adversely against you, or your first stop is the High Court, uh, you know, £100,000, thank you very much. And, um, blow me, the High Court then said that the GDC wasn't correct, and that there was not very much in the regulations that... Uh, prevented the dentist from charging for a better quality crown. And so the GDC, those miserable fucking fucks at the GDC, having having struck off this young dentist, struck her off, mind you, not suspended, struck her off, um, you know, with all her years wasted to go through dental school and all the debt that she, she would have incurred as a result, then decided to spend a load of uh, dentist money on appealing the decision. So they appealed it to the uh, appeals court. And blow me, the appeals court also agreed that there's nothing in the NHS regulations that really prevented this girl from doing what she, she uh, from doing what she wants to do. <laughs> now that is, that is a tremendously profound because one of the biggest questions that uh, patients always used to ask me when I worked on the health service was, if I pay a bit extra, can I get better quality work? 
they knew the NHS was work wasn't all that, right? Now, and this, and, and we always used to say, no, if you want to go private, you have to go fully private. You can't uh, mix and match on the NHS. And this was something that I actually got into a one-on-one -on -one with John Reid about during a Department of Health press conference. And uh, Reid was the uh, health secretary at the time. And uh, I don't know, it must have been about 2006, perhaps. Anyway, um, uh, you know, I said to him, why, what's the problem, you know, with doing, for example, an NHS roof filling and a private crown on top? And he was like, very much, no, that's not possible if you... If you want to do something on the NHS, it has to be done on the NHS. Which is precisely what I uh, applauded Barry Cockcroft for, which was failing to realise that uh, the only leverage that the NHS has over any dentist is this threat to withdraw their NHS contract if they do so much as any private dentistry. But of course, the NHS, which is so arrogant in its hubris, thinks that it can compete any day of the week with the private sector and uh, the dentists who go private are making a massive mistake and think of the NHS pension and, you know uh, and all the benefits of being of working on the NHS and they they have maintained this charade this hypocrisy that NHS treatment is as good as private treatment uh, for years, you know, ever since long after it ceased to be true. Long, and I would say it ceased to be true around about nine, in the mid 1990s, 1990, when they had all the contract who and a lot of dentists left the NHS. Now, you've got three conflicting, and the, and the High Court said that the regulations are poorly written confusing, contradictory, not at all clear. And also that this the striking off uh, penalty was excessive, which of course it was. You know, but, but you have to remember that the GDC exists to torture dentists. The GDC doesn't work for dentists or dentistry. You know, they made that quite clear when they started uh, bumping up the uh, annual retention fee. But we fund the body. But the, the body is not our body. It doesn't work for us. It doesn't uh, help dentists or help dentistry. It, it's a complaint body for the patients. The patients own it. Patients are the stakeholders. And they have this lovely ability to complain free of charge about any dentist, about anything. And then the GDC then acts like an amplifier and it amplifies the charges. The dental law partnership then um, put a sticks a load of, uh, you know, how you fail to live up to this ideal perf uh, perfectionist sort of dentist, you know, because you didn't write down what uh, what solution you used to um, lubricate a root filling while you were while you were carrying out a perfectly good root filling, but you didn't write down the name of the lubricant, so as a result, you're negligent. So they made the mistake of, uh, first of all, not knowing the regulations. And secondly, uh, striking the dentist off for this for this supposed offence, which was it turns out it's not even an offence. Now, my personal skin in this game is that I was the chief uh, executive officer of the General Dental Practitioners Association for a long time. Got involved in it in the late seventies, right through to when it packed up, um, and the. The whole tenet, the fundamental tenet of their policy was that we should be allowed to, uh, patients should be allowed to contribute towards the cost of their treatment. In other words, the NHS treatment would be the baseline fee and that loads of dentists would, you know, possibly choose to work for the baseline fee, as they do at the moment, and to see exempt patients and the exempt patients would still continue to receive treatment. But... If a patient came in and asked this question that they always ask, which is if I pay a bit extra, can I get some feigned acrylic on my dentures that looks a bit like, can I get a, a crown that looks like a tooth and not like a crown? Then you could say yes. You know, we've got a variety of options. 
Now, what's constraining or what was constraining all that was this conflicting, three really conflicting set of um, rules. And the one rule says that for uh, an NHS patient and an NHS, well, they're not an NHS patient, but for any patient accepted for an NHS, all that can be charged is the NHS fee. And that, on the face of it, is, that's it, isn't it? It's dead in the water. Guilty as charged, blood. NHS patient, NHS treatment, NHS fee. But the, the, there's also, the problem is, there's another part of the regulations which state that patients are free to opt to have any part of their work done privately. Now, that means that, uh, and, and I have to sort of clarify this crowd, for example, it wasn't a case of the patient saying, I want a I need a crown, or the dentist saying you need a crown, and you've got two options. You can have this done on the NHS, or I can for for slightly more, I can do it, or I can do it for you privately. This wasn't done in the private sector. It's agreed by all parties it was done on the NHS. However, a private fee was charged uh, for a part of the treatment. And that part of the treatment was uh the type of crown that was used, not the preparation or the fitting or the adjustment or the aftercare, but the actual physical material. So, so there, so there, right? So, this ability to opt to have all or part of your treatment done privately was always understood to be individual components. So, for example, you could have your fillings done on the NHS. But you could then opt to have a private denture. Or you could have, I don't know, three crowns done on the NHS, but one of them done privately. So, but what you couldn't do is you couldn't do an NHS root filling on a tooth and then stick a private crown on the top. Now, the concern, or the, the, what was assumed to be the concern about that, is that should the work fail, um, you know, there'd be some dispute as to who's whether, whether the NHS complaints procedure applied or whether it was the private part that had failed. And it was felt to be too confusing. And this is the argument that I got into with John Reed that led to him asking what what magazine I wrote for and, and barring that magazine from all future uh, Department of Health um, press conferences. So, you, so you've got on the one part, right, you can only charge the NHS fee for NHS work. Secondly, you can a patient can opt out to have any any amount of work done privately. And thirdly, and this and Nick, you know, because of the hubris of the NHS, why would you? And then thirdly, you've got this requirement, which is basically says that you're not allowed to say to a patient that treatment is not available on the health service, or that. Um, the quality of the NHS treatment is in any way inferior, but it's not good good quality treatment. Now, that is the bit that I think I have the most problem with because um, it's it's continuation of the NHS's charade and pretense that NHS treatment and private treatment are the same. And the only difference is that private treatment's more expensive. And the only person that would have private treatment is an idiot who wants to pay more for the same thing. And, you know, nobody, no, no, not the patients in particular are not uh, convinced by this anymore. And just to make it quite explicit, there is a big difference between NHS and private work. And the difference is that uh, private work is working up to a standard, whereas NHS work is working down to a price. And the difference is in the amount of time available quality of the materials and the quality of the laboratory work. And it was the quality of the laboratory work that was there was an issue here. Now Department of Health is sitting there fat, dumb and happy, thinking that this this prohibition against uh, discussion of the differences between NHS and private quality would prevent dentists from selling uh, private work to NHS patients. Because let, let's take a hypothetical case where a patient wants a crown done and they say, well, uh, 
what, what are my options? And they said, well, you can have an NHS crown done for X, or you can have a private crown done for three X. And when the patient says, well, what's the difference? Well, then immediately, the dentist thinks, well, I can't say that the NHS treatment is worse, because there's a prohibition on saying that, even though I know for a fact that it's true. But, you, you know, I'm not allowed to say that. So, so, you know, they have resort to sort of hinting that the patient might be better off having the ground up privately. Well, of course, the patient thinks that the dentist has got vested interest in the anyway, haven't they? Because of the profit, profit seeking motive. And, um, and so, you know, if the dentist is sort of beats around the bush and he's not at all good at talking to patients about the differences between NHS and private work, then they're going to they're gonna say, well, why would I be one of these mucks that the Department of Health thinks pay for private work? Why would I pay? I mean, and, and the other thing here is like a crown is a crown is a crown, you know? Why would I pay? Super has got a bit of a large exhaust on it, hasn't it? Why would I pay, say, £400 for a crown when I could get one on the health service for 100 I mean, I'm using old figures there, but, you know, four times the price or whatever. When, when at the end of the day, what am I going to get? I'm going to get a crown, and the crown is a crown. So why why shouldn't I take advantage of the marvellous NHS? Subsidise dental work and and get, a, get an NHS crown. So this dentist, who, you know, is probably too young to understand that what, you know, she's stepping in a minefield here by suggesting to people that they might get stuff done privately. <coughs> Quite honestly, in my opinion, and being very straightforward about uh, uh, issues that the NHS, you know, say shall not be, that, that well, shall not be deigned, has uh, fallen foul of the establishment. There's a pro a prosecuted her and appealed right the way up to the, the high the appeals court and may well go to the Supreme Court. I don't know. The the uh, GDC playing with other people's money, our money, dentist money, uh, may well decide that they're going to push this because this is why the implication of this decision is huge, huge. You cannot understand how huge the implication of this is. If the, uh, if the appeal court decided, which it did, that the regulations don't prohibit what we're, I would call top-up fees, or they would call top-up fees, then this is going to save the NHS, right? This is, this is what we've been shouting and what the GDPA shouted for for uh, 68 years we've been campaigning for this. 1954 was the original paper on what we call the voucher system, or grant in aid, where, um, um, which is a system which works in other countries, for example, France, where the, the state says, well, you're entitled to a certain amount of state support, and then you can either try and see what you can get for that, or if you want to, go, go to another dentist and, who charges more than what the state will support, uh, and, and pay the difference yourself. And that way you get to choose your own quality. You get to choose the sort of treatment you want. You're not stuck with with the Ritz or, or the Travelodge, you know, not even the Travelodge, you know. I mean, the state of the people's teeth in this country now. Honestly, we're getting back to uh, 1948 in terms of the amount of people walking around with half a dozen. It's not at all uncommon in Ramsgate for people to be walking around with half a dozen or a dozen teeth rotten down to their gum now. So... The, <laughs> the irony of it is, is that the campaign, the, the, the change that we were campaigning for for all that time, since 1954, uh, actually is the, is the situation. Uh, apparently now you can ask patients to top up the fee. You can say, uh, you know, I'm going to use like a cheap old alloy that's going to look crap and go black and, and pit, chip and rust and or I can use dispersal oil for your amalgam, or I can use white filling in your back teeth. If you want to pay for the white filling in your back teeth, then I'll put through uh, 
Yeah. Uh, well, in that case, it might be a bit difficult because I don't think it's going to be it's going to be interesting because they GDC argued that ceramic crowns are available on the health service, and that therefore that's why the extra shouldn't have been charged. Now, in practice, of course, ceramic crowns aren't available on the health service because the fee that they pay doesn't cover the cost of a baker ceramic crown. But that doesn't stop them claiming that ceramic crowns are available on the health service. If only someone could, you know, go out in the back garden, dig up a pot of gold and use it to subsidise their practice, then they could do ceramic crown. But the uh, white fillings are, uh, in back teeth, are, I think are, are pretty well not available. I think they would argue that they're not available because they're cosmetic. And that's the one thing that the um, NHS says it's not available is cosmetic dentistry and that's why and that's because um, they, they don't want to inflate their budget with a load of patients coming in and saying my fillings are unsightly i'm like the morbid place in the same way as you know you they, they won't do orthodontics on young children um you know just on the grounds of them uh, being unsightly um they have to be quite a high threshold in you know including uh, having threatened to kill themselves because their teeth are so, look so bad, stuff like that, before they can get NHS on some objects. So, so the, the, the new regulations came in in 2006. So we're literally 17 years down the line. So we've had Granny Day in place for 17 years and the, nobody in the profession has actually realised it. It's taken the Court of Appeal to actually go through the regulations and say to the Department of Health, this is what you're uh, arguing is not supportable. The regulations don't. Regulations give the patients every right to top up the, the NHS fees and uh, contribute towards the cost of their treatment over and above what the NHS subsidised them. Uh, and that comes under the, uh, the their right to have all or any part of their treatment done privately. So that is, I would say, the single thing that's strangling the NHS more than any other thing is their cap on the fee. In other words, you know, if you can't work down to that price, if you can't do you know, a crown or a filling or whatever for the for what the NHS pays, then you have to just stop doing NHS work. Whereas if you can say uh, you know, I'm going to charge the NHS fee for a root treatment. It's, uh, I don't know, I'm totally out of touch with the NHS price. Say 75 quid or whatever. But um, I'm going to use a special uh, uh, root, root uh, sealant or, uh, you know, uh, a special root filler or whatever. And um, uh, so I'm going to charge you 400 quid. And the patient says, yeah, right then. Because I'd rather, you know, I'd rather get the 75 quid off the NHS and pay say three twenty five, then uh, have to go fully private and and uh, pay four hundred. Whereas, or not not even not even have it made available to me because you know quite frequently the dentist will say, well I'm you know I can't do a root treatment for four hundred pounds. That cost me four hundred pounds, and I can't do it for seventy five quid. Therefore, I'm not. I'm going to say to the patient. I'm sorry, that tooth can't be root treated. And, and what they are saying is they can't. It can't be root treated financially. Almost always, it can be root treated clinically. <laughs> and, and the Department of Health has a lot of trouble arguing with dentists over this um, issue of, of clinicals. The dentists do have the clinical freedom to say, "Yes, this is this is my treatment plan, and I stand by it." And if it involves taking all the patient's teeth out. Uh, uh, and, and make it full dentures um, and then another dentist might look at the same patient and say well my treatment plan would involve root treating all the patient's teeth and making a, making a load of crowns well you know you, you might suspect that the first dentist has arrived at that treatment plan on grounds of financial expediency um, and you might suspect that and I might not disagree with you but proving it that's the, that's the point So, you know, at a stroke, this Williams dentist case has driven a coach and horses through 
the NHS uh, constraints. And it seems to me that although the professional will be very hesitant to start doing this, this is all online. I mean, you could perhaps I've got a link to the court proceeding, the appeal court judgment and the hearing online. But the, the Department of Health's argument was always that, you know, that uh, <laughs> My work, I love my workforce. I trust my workforce. I would let them do anything in, in pursuit of our goals of doing good quality dentistry, making money and having fun. The Department of Health hates dentists, has always started hating dentists in 1990, really, really hated dentists in 1992, and has hated them ever since. And basically thinks they're greedy, money-grabbing, uh, Part, a part of the health service that they would rather not have anything to do with. And so the uh, argument advanced by the Council for the GDC was that there's a conflict between the dentist's uh, financial objectives and his clinical objectives. So in other words, what he'll do is if he sees he's going to get uh, £75 off the NHS for, let's say, a root filling, uh, but but sees that hello, sees that in the market market price for a, a root filling let's say is two hundred. That what he's going to do is he's going to adjust his top up fees up to uh, two hundred, and and therefore the uh, NHS will end up effectively subsidising private dentistry, which is what again you know another big uh, totemic issue for the left, which is that if private funds start going into the NHS, then what will happen is that people who don't have the ability to uh, put up those private funds will end up at the back of the queue for NHS treatment, which is absolutely not the, the whole point of the NHS, is that everyone can get treated equally. So uh, it turned out that, you know, if you do stick to that rule, that nobody um, nobody's allowed to contribute directly to the NHS, then everybody does get uh, treated equally. In other words, they, they, they all don't get any NHS. Well, they all, they all get really appalling NHS and walking around with half a dozen or a dozen roots. Teeth rotted down to their gum. So are they gonna, what are they going to do about this lifeline, you know, that's been thrown to them by the, by the Supreme Court, by, by the um, Court of Appeal? Oh, it, the cynic in me says that they are just going to redraft the regulations to state explicitly that um, uh, this sort of uh, mixing that was found allowable by the Court of Appeal is now no longer allowed. They're just going to change the regs to, uh, you know, go back to the, what they call the status quo ante, which is what everyone believed that the status quo ante was, well, that you're not allowed to charge extra for NHS treatment. And so... You know, and 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 in and so in destroying the NHS, which is what they have been doing, and what this any rule change would do, would would just continue to um, put it on its uh, spiral decline. Um, they are literally going to be grasping defeat from the jaws of victory, because if they just if the GDC and the Dental Health uh, Department of Health just wound its neck in, and let Williams win the case and let the profession finally realise that this question of can I can I put a bit extra in to get better quality work? The answer being yes. Then then that in my opinion that would pretty much single handedly save NHS dentistry in this country. It would uh, allow for a cash infusion into NHS dentists which is the only thing which is going to uh, save save the service. And not only that, it's a cash infusion that wouldn't be coming from the Department of Health. It will be coming from hundreds of thousands of patients, willing patients, who want to stay on the health service, who want to, uh, you know, get the benefit of uh, the, you know, the service to which they're told they contribute through their national insurance. Uh, you know, for whether that's true or not, and um, don't see why they should have to go privately, and and everybody lives happily ever after. But I bet they won't, 
I bet they'll, I bet they will say, because I, I think what they can see is a thin end of the wedge, because, for example, um, if it's held that dentists can charge more for crowns, why can't radiographers charge more for um, a quicker review of uh, your x-ray, or why can't, uh, why can't your doctor charge, well, your doc there's a lot of things that doctors charge for anyway, but why can't doctors charge more for quicker referrals into hospital, or what? Why can't hospitals charge more for um, uh, appointments uh, that are running on time and stuff like that? You know, you get this whole. But the the um, the, the the argument that uh, dentists will put their commercial uh, considerations above the clinical considerations, I think first of all it's an insult to dentists because dentists are we're well aware of our clinical obligations. Do you know what I mean? Where we we are obligated to do be professionals and do professional work. And to say, well, you know, you're going to just unleash a whole load of <laughs> Frankie-like uh, dentists on, on the innocent NHS population, uh, I think is a bit insulting. And secondly, you know, th there is competition in dentistry insofar as... Uh, uh, I mean, I, I think probably dentists find that there's less competition now since the collapse of the NHS dental service, you know, under under Sarah, Sarah Hurley, who in the, 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 the other news is resigning after eight years of doing nothing and getting nowhere and achieving nil, nada, zilch, uh, has now decided that she's going to move on to some other no non job, you know, working for some other non some other quango. And so, I've half a mind to apply for the job of the chief dental officer again. I did it once before uh, when Barry Cockroft got the job, and uh, I got zero chance of getting it. But <laughs> I do. I would like to think that they've got a choice, you know, in terms of um, uh, apl applicants. But I think. It'll probably go to one of the uh, assistant chief dental officers or deputy chief dental officers or whatever, because that's the it's very much Buggins' turn in the Department of Health, uh, and they don't have a clue about um, economics, dental economics, uh, running a dental surgery, being a dentist, <laughs> and yet they're in charge of everything. Round of applause for Williams, and a round of applause for the people who supported and and represented Williams and uh took it to the high court you know a, a blatant uh a blatant abuse of power by the general dental council to arrive at that decision in the first case and uh a, a, you know quite an obvious statement that they didn't know what they were doing that they don't know the regulations that they are they're very much well how are things done around here well this is the way things have always been done Okay, fine, I'll go along. I'll go along with everyone else, if that's what everyone else is. Has anyone actually read the regulations? Well, I think someone did read the regulations in about, nine, you know, in about 1992. But, you know, but, but apparently this is how it works. And when, when that's not, and the, and the appeal court have said, no, actually that's not how it works. <laughs> You're completely wrong. And this is why, again, I, I place my faith in the free market. Because... The Department of Health can, with its misinterpretation uh, and, and distortion of the fees, can carry on for so long. But then sooner or later, they run up against a couple of things. And one is market forces. Market forces meaning you can give away £10 notes for £5 for so long, especially if you're the government and or you're a government agency and government's got the printing press and they can... So they can print money and give away ten pound notes for a fiver, but then sooner or later, the market, the free market, steps in and says, "Actually, no, that's that's not supportable in the long term. I'm going to crush you, crush you. I'm going to step stamp on you and put everything back to the way it has to be, the natural order of things. The laws of mathematics apply. The laws of physics apply. The laws of economics apply. And and the other thing is that." You know the Department of Health um, can can misapply the law, and the General Dental Council can misapply the law. 
But then when someone with the courage to go to the High Court does so, and the High Court then has a look dispassionately and with a third party eye, looks at the silly buggery and the chicanery that goes on in, within the GDC and the Department of Health as a whole, and says, look, you guys are taking a diabolical bleeding liberty with, with, with what you're, you know, how you're applying these rules. And uh, the GDC says, you know, they're arrogant enough to say, no, well, thank you, High Court. We don't agree. We think you're wrong. We're going to go to the appeal court. And then when the appeal court says, no, you are wrong. <laughs> you are silly buggering about. And we agree with the, with the High Court. So they lose in the appeal court as well. I mean, that is a severe, that is a severe caning. That is really, they have, they have taken one hell of a beating, the GDC, uh, in the last few months. And quite rightly too. And do you know what? If they had a shred of integrity, one shred of fucking integrity, the whole fucking lot would resign. They would resign. Because this is 17 years of mis misapplication, maladministration. How many cases do you think they're going to have to go through to sort this out? How many times do you think they've made an adverse finding against the dentist or sanctioned a dentist for um, a mixing or suggesting that uh, mixing uh, could be allowed or should be allowed? How many dentists have been banned from press conferences for pointing out this most simple change that could be made? That could have saved the health service, could have saved all this trouble and, and would, stay, would still save it even now. If only they uh, said, all right, hands up, we were wrong, we resign, let someone else have a go. But they're not going to, they're, they're not going to. These guys, they've got big egos, these people. And they're going to rewrite the regs and put, put NHS dentistry back in the shit, which is where it is now and which is uh, where they're determined where it's going to stay. Okay, so big news day. Okay, tell your friends. Charge extra. Why not? Bye.